what kind of things could Cardano do for a state like Texas and other states? Like what, what does that world look like? What does oh, that conversation look a, like? Every domain and aspect that's frustrating, nepotistic, corrupt, inefficient can be innovated. And GovTech is one of our areas of expertise. You know, all that work we do in Africa, it's so amazing that Silicon Valley and all these other guys discount it. We're saying, well, we're beta testing like GovTech in the harshest possible environment. If it works there and at its scale, I can undercut all of you guys when we sell it to America. You know that. And it's better. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't really throw that baby out with the bathwater. There's some real market value here. So let's look at Texas. Okay. Oil, uh, so, so mineral rights, water rights. I'm a rancher. Mineral water rights, big deal in the frontier, Texas included. And it gets pretty bad. All of that can be put on a blockchain. Massive efficiency gains. Whole voting system in the state can put on a blockchain. Absolute fidelity and credibility. No hacking. No participation by undocumented immigrants, uh, no, no participation by dead people, criminals, these types of things. You can every year know everybody eligible to vote of that set who voted, count the votes and know that uh, you have no waste, fraud and abuse. Radical transparency of the budget. Every single dollar spent by the state of Texas, you can track and trace. You can see where it went, the metadata behind it, and the audit trail on that. No more lost money. No more Pentagon waking up saying we lost a trillion dollars. We don't know where it went. None of that stuff happens. No more monkey business with any of those things. Okay, so you have radical transparency. Consent. Uh, for example, signing of contracts, you know, digital contracts, these types of things. You want to register a business. How about we make it a blockchain-based registration? And you can uh, file all your stuff there. You never have to interface with a government agency. Just a smart contract. Go ahead and pay. Texas can even try to issue its own currency. Monetary policy. If they want to go big, go home. Lone Star State can, uh, can divorce itself a bit from U.S. monetary policy if they want to. Uh, they can issue stable coin, these types of things. Incentives back tokens for carbon reduction. Anything they want to do there. Okay. Uh, they can route all of the charity programs and grant programs that they have and require blockchain-based auditing. So anybody who receives the money has to dial into a system and support a certain standard. So that same radical transparency can be pushed into the private industry as well. Okay, these are just some licenses and certifications, medical licenses, law licenses, anything licensed in the state. All those credentials can be put on a blockchain, made more uniform, easier to verify. It means as an employer, you never have to call a federal agency or a state agency to verify something. You can just check it in the database and you know if it's there, it's real. Identity theft. You can create a state ID with DIDs. You have a significantly stronger and more hardened system to ameliorate when people's identities have been stolen and resolve that. Privacy of data, data privacy, these types of things. Who owns your data? You can mandate that you do have self-sovereign identity. And all the surveillance, capitalism, Facebook, everything, say if you want to have a Texas customer, you have to follow this policy for the state of Texas. You know, these types of things. Uh, track and trace of the supply chains inside the state for health and safety. Uh, you say any food that you eat, that food has to follow a blockchain track and trace. And we need to have barcodes, QR codes. You scan it with your cell phone, you can see the origin. So if somebody in the state of Texas is eating something, they know what they're putting in their body, 100%. Same for the vaccines. You can do all those things and more at a significantly lower cost than you could with the legacy system, and every single citizen of the state of Texas does not have to trust the state of Texas once that system's in place. They can verify it themselves, inclusive accountability. So you get free and fair elections, you get safe food, you get strong and free stable money, you get much better property registration and, uh, and uh, zoning and all these other things, and you get a freer, more open society. Furthermore, it's all programmable. Meaning, if an entrepreneur wants to work with the state of Texas, build on the state of Texas's infrastructure, they don't have to go to the state and make a deal with them. Just like Apple with the App Store or Android with the App Store. Just build an app. There's an interface. There's an API. And you can deploy in a permissionless way. Better than Apple. Better than Android. And then suddenly you're serving the people of Texas and you have access to all those municipal services, you know, and you can get your fire service on board, you can get your police services, your emergency services on board, all these types of things. For example, let's say you care a lot about oversight of the police. It's a big pet project here. Well, maybe you make it so that all that body cam footage, it's hashed and those hashes are put on the blockchain. 
which means you know if it's been tampered with and sections have been deleted, these types of things. Yeah. State of Texas can't change it once it's said. Little stuff like that. Civil asset <laughs> forfeiture. Create a whole blockchain system just for that and have oversight with it. And if the government gets it wrong, they lose the money and uh, maybe it takes a fine. You can, you can even create bonds and bounties. So when the government makes mistakes, uh, it, they actually get fined automatically by the system. It doesn't even go to the courts. So from an oversight viewpoint, you can do all kinds of crazy shit inside the oversight uh, to ensure that the government behaves correctly. And these are the kinds of conversations you can have with the constituencies and say, what do you value? What do you care about? And whatever you value, we can build it. And once we build it, it's going to work the way it was intended. Instead of don't be evil, it can't be evil, it won't fail. It's a lot more honest than any politician. Yeah. Man, just some things off the top of your head, just right there. <laughs> yeah. Thank we you. We do for... a lot of GovTech. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I see that. Thank you for the visualization of those solutions. Because I've just been kind of thinking about it ever since that tweet. He, we were in touch with him, and he's talking to his team about that, by the way. So that would be, I think it would be epic if, if we could yeah. somehow set up that conversation. Because I love that real-world stuff. And, and I, I see Cardano, you know, from era to era, just, you know, completing these upgrades. I see it kind of just getting ready to do things like this, right? To provide solutions to, to right. places like Ethiopia and Texas. It's already starting to. Yeah, especially the state of Wyoming. I mean, just look at how much progress has been made there, and we're just getting started. So it'll it'll come, you know, and uh, it's, it's all about restoring faith and trust into institutions. Democracies and representative republics, they only work when you trust the institutions. If you don't trust them, you have to restore it. And you can do it through investigations and leadership changes and new laws and constitutional amendments. But when that process fails for too long, Eventually, the only recourse is a civil war uh, and, uh, and some new government coming in. And I don't want to go down that road. And so the alternative here is, frankly, just putting a new governance system in place through something that's not quite private and it's not quite public. And, and there's been attempts to do this, uh, for example, with the Federal Reserve System. It's not quite private. It's not quite public. It's some sort of thing that lives kind of in between the two. You know, it's just it's just there. And the hope was that by doing it that way, it would somehow inoculate it from the politics of society. It failed miserably, but they at least tried. And the thing about blockchain is that it actually has the power to fulfill that dream. And the killer application, kind of like email was to the Internet, is monetary policy to blockchain. But by no means is it the only application, just like email is not the only application to the Internet. It just gets the party started. And once you start thinking that way, you go through line item by line item. Which institutions in society have lost trust and legitimacy? And then it's just a question of what do we need to build to restore it and bring everybody along so that we both agree, even if we disagree politically, that the institutions are solid. And if we can't, democracy fails. It can't work. If half of America feels the voting system is broken, they no longer will honor the legitimacy of that system. And they'll get angrier and angrier, and they'll feel because they can't express themselves through votes, they can only express themselves through violence. That's what always happens when you have a, a delegitimization of the system.